Hello, Jeff Zwerink again here with Give and Take. This is the segment of the show where we look at fascinating scientific discoveries that help equip you to share the gospel with those around. Today I'm joined by my colleague and friend, Fazrana, and we're going to be looking and asking the question, is the genetic code well designed? Fuzz, good to have you here today. Jeff? Now I gotta say this is one of those topics that almost seems out of place. I mean, we're talking biology and that doesn't seem to be computer science genetic code. So why do scientists use the term genetic code? What's going on here? Yeah, and to understand that, we've got to do a very quick primer in uh, molecular biology. Uh, but the way to think about this is that biochemical systems are not only molecules, but they actually are molecules that harbor information. Okay. And so DNA is an information storage molecule. And the way that it stores information is digitally. Uh, Which means what? In, it, in discrete units. Okay. Just like there's digital information that's stored in a computer system. So kind of like ones and zeros, if you will. Exactly. Okay. Except here we're dealing with A, G, Cs, and Ts instead of ones and zeros. All right. But the idea is that DNA is a long molecule that's linear, and it's formed from smaller molecules that are linked together in a chain. And those smaller molecules are abbreviated A, G, C, and T. Sometimes are called the genetic letters. And so just like the sequence of letters in the English alphabet mm -hmm. can specify words, the sequence of genetic letters can specify biochemical words, which would be the instructions needed to make another class of molecules called proteins. Okay. And I, so, so let me just, before we move on there, is this just something that's a helpful mnemonic or is it actually a code? It's, it's actually a code, okay. uh, but, but again, you've got information in, in the form of the, the, the sequences of mm -hmm. uh, genetic letters that make up uh, the DNA molecule. Well, that, that, that information is really the set of instructions to make proteins. Okay. Proteins are molecules that carry out the different cell operations that form the different cell structures. There's thousands of proteins, different types of proteins mm -hmm. needed for a typical cell to function. And those proteins are also made up of uh, letters as well, biochemical okay. letters. These are called amino acids, and there are 20 different amino acids where the precise sequence actually determines the structure and the function of proteins. Okay. So you have two languages, if you will, inside the cell, the language of DNA and the language of proteins. So if I understand, so the DNA is sequenced in a way to produce various amino acids, yeah. and then the sequencing of those amino acids tells you what sort of proteins you get. That's right. And then the proteins are actually what do the work of making the cell function, if you will. Right. So, so it is very much like a computer program where you write this thing and it says to do X, Y, and Z, and it does X, Y, and Z, and it does something, whatever that something exactly. may be. Exactly. Now, but you have two languages. <clears throat> okay. You've got the DNA language and the protein language, so you need a set of rules to translate one language into another language. Okay. And that's the genetic code. Okay. So the genetic code is, is the set of rules that essentially allow for that information to go from one format the DNA format to the protein format. So what actually defines the information in the cell is actually the genetic code. Okay. So you could think of this as being the, the heart of biochemistry itself. Mm -hmm. The heart of life's chemistry is this set of rules called the genetic code. And people for a long time just thought that the genetic code was a frozen accident produced by the outworkings of an evolutionary process. But over the last couple of decades or so, scientists studying the genetic code have come to realize that these rules are highly optimized. So, so optimized means that whatever happens, it happens in the best way. I mean, that's generally what optimized. And I, I've talked with you enough to know that that optimization at least plays out recognizing that the cell operates in kind of a noisy environment where you've got various aspects of the code can switch. So I'm presuming the optimization plays into, mm -hmm. in the light of these variations, mutations, and things that happen, your proteins still end up working the way they do. That, that, that's right. I mean, because uh, a mutation would be a change in the genetic letters of DNA. Mm -hmm. And so in those change, it means that the, 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 the proteins are going to change. Right. And that's not a great situation. Mm -hmm. So the set of rules is designed in such a way that if a mutation happens, what's called a substitution mutation, uh, that means you're going to generate a, 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 a change in the code mm -hmm. that's going to specify either the same amino acid 
in that protein or one that has very similar chemical or physical properties. And so, so the minimization or the error minimization, if you will, is not that it gets rid of the mutations. It's that when the mutation happens, the code makes sure it does the right thing anyway. That's right. It kind of buffers out that that mutation. Now, I, I got to say that's remarkable. I write a lot of computer code, uh, and I have yet to write a piece of code that can you just throw a random piece of, or throw a new letter in or throw a new word in. Most of the time, it won't even compile, and even if it compiles, it won't do what I say. That that is really a remarkable. It thing. is, and and there are ten to the eighteen possible genetic codes that could have existed. Okay, and and the code that we see in nature seems to be superior to all the possible codes that could have existed. Uh, and in fact, recently researchers discovered that there's a different type of mutation. Uh, what we talked about previously was a substitution mutation. Mm -hmm. These are called frame shift mutations. It's kind of complex what's going on there. Okay. But the code seems to be optimized to, to, to buffer the effects of frame mm -hmm. shift mutations as well. So, so it, does, it does both of these bufferings. It, it's a double optimization. And then there's a, an also evidence that the code is optimized to harbor multiple overlapping codes because in addition to the genetic code in DNA, there's other codes that lay on top of it. So you have like this triple optimization for the genetic code. And so the idea is that you see such exquisite optimization uh, that it's very difficult to account for how that code would be, would be that optimized in an evolutionary framework. And there's such an elegance to mm -hmm. it that it really looks like that there was a mind involved. You know, that's interesting because, I mean, anytime you're watching sci-fi, and granted, we don't have other life to compare this with, but any, you know, they're always finding, oh, this thing, and it's so much more sophisticated than what we do. The, the conclusion everybody always draws is, oh, there's a mind behind this. It seems like when we're looking at the genetic code, it's optimized for different kinds of buffering from errors that are introduced. It's optimized across a whole slew of different ways of doing it, and it does it in the best possible way uh, and carries multiple codes yeah. at the same time. That really does look like there's a mind behind it. Yeah. Uh, Simon Conway Morris, who's an evolutionary biologist, at one point said that the genetic code in nature displays an eerie perfection. And, and, and those, to me, uh, are words that you would use to describe uh, a system that is really, that's designed but a system that's designed when you didn't expect that mm -hmm. design to be there. Well, thanks, Foz. I appreciate your comments again. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org and look for Fuzz's great blog on this. It's called The Optimal Design of the Genetic Code, because there you will get more understanding of how this optimization works and how it points to a mind and how you can use that information to point others that you know around you to the God who created all of us.